Hello and welcome to this review of my Schaefer's Star Wars Darth Vader fountain pen. Now I got the Darth Vader version because I couldn't resist the pull to the dark side. First of all it's a pretty striking pen but before we get there let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging it came in. It came in this packaging which is pretty cool on its own. It's actually kind of cheap though it just came in this uh, plastic pouch essentially which folded out has a little picture of Darth Vader on here it says Star Wars Schaefer and it tells you that it's a fountain pen in three languages on the back it's unfortunately not too interesting it doesn't tell you anything about Star Wars it just tells you a little bit of history about the Schaefer pen company inside the package came this one year warranty and care guide which in itself is pretty pretty cheap and it comes in I think a dozen languages I mean if you're a fountain pen user this is gonna be pretty basic knowledge so you can just probably just burn this as for the packaging it's pretty shit. so again you can burn that as well all right, let's get on to the main attraction, which is this pen. Now let's start at the top. The top of the cap is flat and it says Schaefer twice on there, uh, just punched into this black plastic bit. And the rest of the pen is pretty cylindrical. It's basically just a cylinder. And right here it says Schaefer. Down here you see this symbol, which I do apologize if this is a Star Wars reference. And that says Star Wars right here. And then you have the clip with the white dot. I'll get back to that in just a sec. Uh, very conventional clip. I believe it's used on the Prelude, if I'm not mistaken. And then you see the Darth Vader mask being covered by the clip. This is a terrible, absolutely terrible sh design job. Whoever decided this was a good idea... I mean, what the hell were they thinking? I'll cool off a little bit more. Okay, so the rest of the barrel has these Darth Vader stripes on them. Uh, both sides has the copyright right here. And then it says Darth Vader right there. And then at the very end, you get this little metal bit, which is where you post the cap. You uncap it as such, and you get this really steep step down to this rubberized grip section right here. And you have this Schaefer's medium point steel nib. And you actually see this feed and nib a lot on many of Schaefer's lower end pens. So let's talk a little bit about the posting. The posting is rather strange. I've never had a pen that posts so shallow and so forcefully. You have to really force this cap into the, the back of the pen. I mean, I guess it does an okay job. And then you have, again, the rest of the pen, which is unmiraculous. Especially when it comes to this grip section right here. This is uh, just abysmal. Uh, it is a slip cap, so it's got this little lip right here in the grip section. And it's uh, clipping onto this little, the inside of the cap right about right here. Uh, also, this pen came with, if I can screw it, came with a cartridge, which is what I'm using currently. Standard black ink from Schaefer's. This is good. It's a, it's a standard Schaefer's cartridge, so you can slide in a converter if you'd like. Um, I haven't tried this myself, but you could also, I guess, maybe eyedropper this because there's no holes that I can see in the barrel. You just need to put a little bit of silicone grease on these threads and fill up the barrel with ink, and I don't see why this can't be eyedropper filled. There's no metal parts. Now, another complaint about this pen are these threads and this movable grip section. When I start to tighten this, I can't tighten it all the way shut if I'm holding it like I would normally because this little rubber piece of the grip section moves about, but I have to start really grasping this to, th to thread this shut. Uh, I think it's more appealing to kids than it is to adults and serious fountain pen users. Now let's go ahead and talk about this white dot. Schaefer originally introduced the white dot in 1924 thereabouts and the white dot represented a lifetime warranty on the pen. 
Schaefer only put these white dots on pens that they felt were the highest of quality and would last the longest in all of their pen line production. Now, for about the last 30 or 40 years thereabouts, this symbol has changed in meaning quite a few ways. At the very latest in the 1950s, the white dot represented quality. It represented the highest quality from the Schaefer line. This practice was actually carried out all the way until 1998 when they re-released the Schaefer Balance, also co-produced by the Levenger Pen Company as well. These were extremely beautiful pens, very well made, and of extremely high quality. And this pen definitely deserves a white dot on this pen. Now for this instance, this white dot is kind of misleading because this pen really isn't a high quality pen. It's very plasticky, it's very cheap, it's not well designed, and having this white dot, which everybody is familiar with, with quality, and slapping it on a pen of this caliper is really kind of an insult to themselves. Okay, enough bantering about the pen, how does it actually write? Okay, to answer that question, I've got some standard binder paper, and uh, let's go ahead and do some writing with it. So, not the most pleasant nib right off the bat. I've only been using it for about a day and a half or so. It's got really terrible feedback on the upstroke and a bit of scratchiness on the downstroke. So it's really inconsistent. Uh, let's test wetness. Uh, actually rather on the drier side. Okay, let's do a little bit of flexing. You can see just the faintest hint of line variation right here, but really this has got almost no flex in it at all. Okay, let's turn it upside down and do some upside down writing. Uh, rather scratchy, but not actually the most terrible. Okay, and finally let's do some upside down nib pressing and see if we get any effects. Uh, which you don't really see much at all. Just a very awful scratchy experience. Okay, finally, let's do a little bit of fast writing. I'm seeing quite a bit of skipping. You saw it right here, right here, and you can keep seeing it as it happens right here. It's skipping quite a bit. I'm wondering if we're we're definitely not low in ink, so that's not the issue. And yeah, we're seeing quite a bit of skipping in here, so not the greatest performing nib and feed. All right, so pros and cons time. So what do I think about this pen? So let's go over some of the pros, okay? I think this pen looks pretty cool. It's got a really cool look to it. It's got Star Wars all over it. It says Darth Vader on there. I mean, who doesn't want something in their collection that says that? It's a fun design. I think this is more targeted for the younger audience, for children who are really big into Star Wars. I mean, they'd be the coolest kid if they had one of these pens. It's actually a very decent size. It's a very nice size. It's good for kids, and I think it's also good for adults who like these kind of pens as well. It's not too big, it's not too small. It's actually a very nice medium-sized pen. The clip, on the other hand, is actually very nice. It's very nice and springy, very durable. And the last thing was the ink in the cartridge actually was very good and it doesn't feather on standard binder paper as you saw in the writing sample. Okay, so let's rip this thing a new one. Let's talk about the cons. This pen does not write well and is not a very well-made pen. What makes this worse is this Star Wars branding. People are going to flock to these pens, buy them, 
and try to write with them, and they get to see how awful it is to write with fountain pens. Unfortunately, they'll use this pen and assume that this is how all fountain pens write. Another thing is this nib is absolutely sh**. The nib has so much feedback. It's not necessarily scratchy per se, but it's just really rough to write with. And to be frank, people who buy this pen aren't going to know how to smooth a nib. They're not going to know how to grind a nib to smoothen it out. So therefore, they're going to just assume that it's a scratchy nib and it doesn't write nicely. It wouldn't have been as bad if they actually glued this grip section down, but what they actually did was they just slid this whole thing right over it and just call it a day. That's it. Another part of it is this rubber is not going to last very long. Another thing, posting this pen is terrible. This is an awful design, and I think they did this to lower the cost of the pen. Another part that I just told you about was this white dot misrepresenting quality. And probably the worst thing, the absolutely most sinful thing you could have done on this pen was cover up the Darth Vader logo with the clip. Uh, other than that, this pen is kind of cool, but uh, I'm never going to use it to be honest. I just got it to basically make this review and talk about it. For the same price, you can buy a generic entry-level cross pen, or better yet, you can even get a Pilot Metropolitan, which runs around $16. This pen clocks in at about $15 to $20. Unfortunately, you're not getting any more pen for that price. What you're actually getting is this logo right here. Anyway, that's been my review for this. Thank you all for watching. Go ahead and like if you like this video. Go ahead and dislike if you didn't like it. Uh, leave a comment if you want to see more. And coming up now is a close-up montage of this fountain pen. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.